Hi and welcome back everyone. In today's video we're going to be potting up all my chili plants into their final pot size and I'll also take you for a quick look around for an update of the raised beds and we'll see how they're doing. So you can see the plants are really doing well. I'm really happy with the progress that they have had and we can see they're growing really well. You can see there's uh, some flowers coming up. I keep picking them off to try and optimize the growth but uh, they're coming back quicker than I can pick them off. It's always a good sign that uh, it's time to pot up to the next pot when you start seeing so many flowers. Basically these plants are ready to start fruiting. The reason that happens is the plants have uh, spread their roots as much as they can and they've realized well this is probably as big as we can get so let's start throwing down some fruits and flowers. It's very important when that starts happening that you make sure you get them into a bigger pot else you're going to be having plants that are going to stay roughly this size. Not all of them are throwing out flowers just yet and uh, that's also somewhat of a good indication how big the plants are right now. It's quite a good indication of what size pot we use. For potting up I generally use two sizes of pots. Uh, the vast majority are the bigger size, this one here. This is a 10 litre. This is a 29 centimetre pot or a 10 litre pot. That's generally about as big as I go. I have experimented with bigger pots before so we can see down there those pots. I have tried them before with chili plants but I have the most success with the 10 litre pot or the 7.5 litre pot. So the 7.5 litre pot is a 25 centimetre diameter. I choose which final pot to go into based on a few criteria. Uh, past experience with how big I've seen the plants get to, so my jalapenos always go into bigger pots. It's important that you grow your plants in the right size pots. Because our growing season is a little bit shorter than where the chilies originally come from, which uh, pretty much can grow all year round, they don't have harsh winters. Because we have that shorter growing season, we need to be conscious of how the plants grow. If you put a plant in a pot that is way too big for it, what's going to happen is it's going to spend most of its season in spreading its roots and trying to get as big as it can. And you're going to end up not getting many fruits or maybe sometimes none at all. Some plants grow much quicker. So the bigger size pots will work perfectly fine for it. If you had a growing season that was very long, then fine, go ahead, put it in the biggest size pot you can. If you only have eight or nine months to actually get your plants to maturity, then just make sure you got the right size pot. So some good indicators is obviously trial and error is one of the best. Uh, you'll see which plants do better in smaller size pots. Uh, I found that things like jalapenos do very well in the large pots. They grow very quickly and you'll get fruits very early on. The super chili, this is one that has a very, very quick to fruit. You can see I'm getting so many flowers here. That's a good indicator. Any, any of these that have loads of flowers already, that means that they're a very quick grower and definitely put them in a bigger pot. Some of the others like this here, you can see this is a lovely plant, the Cardi MOA bonnet but it's quite small still and I'm not seeing any any flowers coming up just yet. And I have a few others like that so that's how I make my decision. I just have a look at the plants. I use my experience in the past with which ones work best. If this is your first season growing then stick with about a 7.5 liter pot. If you want to take a chance go to the 10 liter pot or even the 12.5 liter. So the first thing we're going to have to do is create our soil mix. So I just got my compost here. So that's 50 scoops and it's important to count to just make sure that you know what ratios you're going to be mixing in there. So that's 50 scoops and we'll be able to work out the rest of what we're going to add in based on what we've put in there already. I'm adding perlite. If you've watched my uh, beginner's guide video, then you would uh, see what I actually do with my mixes. But this is some perlite and some vermiculite. I have big bags of this in my shed, but uh, I'm just going to finish this off for, for this mix. 
and what I typically use is one part vermiculite, one part perlite per 10 parts of compost. There's 50 scoops of compost in here, so that means I need five scoops of the vermiculite and the perlite. This isn't an exact science, just uh, make sure you have enough. Um, it's just easier when you're working in ratios. And be careful about breathing in this dust. So only three scoops of vermiculite, so I need to get a break open our big bag. So I picked up some more vermiculite and some perlite. So we should have enough for this session. We needed two more scoops. We're also gonna add some fish blood and bone meal, just one scoop of that. And lastly, that magic ingredient, Epsom salts. So this here, I'm going to add probably about a third of a scoop. So it doesn't need a lot. Um, actually, maybe even a bit less than that. Maybe about a one-fifth of a scoop. I think that's more than enough for this amount. I do use... Epsom salts as a foliar spray during the season as well, so I don't need a lot in here. So now we just need to mix this up. First plant we're going to do is this ring of fire. I learned quite a cool trick from another YouTube channel I've been watching lately. A really great channel. I would recommend to go and watch it. I'll put a link up in the uh, in the top of the screen. The guy's name is Muddy Boots, a really cool um, channel, uh, he has so much knowledge. But the way he pots his plants, it just really makes a lot of sense. So let me show you how he does it. So what he does is he takes his pot, let me take that out for now. He takes his pot and puts it inside and then surrounds it with the compost mix. Squeezes it down the sides. And it makes a perfect little, makes a perfect little hole for your plant. So yeah, I was really chuffed with that ingenious little way of doing it. Look at that lovely root structure. That's incredible. So that just pops straight in there. Perfect fit and nice and easy. The way I've done it in the past, I'm sure it's the way that most people do it. It's a bit fiddly, but this is just so much easier. So thank you, Muddy Boots. And then just top the soil up around it. And first one is done. Don't forget to put your label back. Next we're going to do a smaller pot. So the 7.5 litre pot. This is my little sugar rush peach. Uh, lovely looking plant and doing really well. I really do love this idea. I've been using this method for uh, a little while now and wow, it makes life a lot easier. Again, look at that lovely root structure.
So I'm going to get on and do the rest of them. I've got 50 plants to do today, so it's going to take a bit of time and it, it will take even longer if I have to film it all. So I'll get back to you as soon as I'm done with potting up all the plants. Unfortunately, I ran out of compost, so I'm having to head out to the local garden center. Luckily, I have one just around the corner from me, so it won't take me too long to get back to what I was doing. I need to make a mental note that I need uh, a lot more homemade compost next year. I really thought I'd have enough homemade compost this year to do all my chilies, but unfortunately I don't. So next year I'll make sure that I have a lot more. I do love this garden center. It's one of the smaller ones, but it's nice and close to where I live, so that's very useful. Hopefully that's going to be enough. We'll see. Finally, I'm done. It has been about five hours <laughs> since I started. I am absolutely knackered. But it's good to see that they're all in their pots. Um, I've started putting the drippers back in. You can see I've done the ones over here. I've done this lot over here as well. And... Uh, yeah, I'm just happy they're in their pots now. I learned a few things while I was doing this. I think I make the same mistake almost every year. I underestimated by a huge margin how much compost I needed. And uh, ended up having to go to the store to go and get some to supplement my homemade compost. And then ran out of that as well. <laughs> and had to uh, sift some more of my compost. So that's why my compost sift is sitting out there at the moment because I I needed enough for six more pots but anyway they're all in their pots right now so that is good got a bunch down there I haven't yet plugged in the drippers into there but I will do that shortly so here are my jalapenos always good to space them out properly so when there's just six in the tray like I have here it's using the big pots then it's pretty straightforward just put them to the corners and then put these two to the edge when you've got eight pots it's a little bit of a different story and you can see here you can see there when we have eight pots um, I could put them all in a row so all over here but the way i've spaced it here it just gives it gives the plant a bit more space to grow so it seems to work out quite well this way so i'm really happy with that i'm going to finish off putting in the drippers in a little while and carry on spacing them out properly uh, but i thought i'd just show you a little bit of what's going on over here you can see there's a lot of growth over here these are some plants that are getting ready to go outside i think i might actually plant them outside we can see these are just taking off in these root trainers and uh, you need to go and plant them outside these are courgettes and these here these are corn sweet corn so they're coming up nicely I uh, don't know if it's a little bit too early just yet to take them out but maybe maybe in about a week's time and then over there we have some snap peas and what are these these are just normal sweet peas over here we have patty pan squashes i think those will go outside today as well you can see there's a, a late arrival back there there's another late one over there that's still trying to come up but yeah i think i'll plant those out and then these are some extras for my granddad uh, of my gem squashes he tried to start them this year, but unfortunately they didn't germinate. So I've planted a couple for him because I'll show you outside. My gem squashes are doing really well and I've got enough in the garden now. So on that note, let's go and have a look outside. Start off with the strawberries. These guys are doing great and we already have some strawberries coming out. So let's see down there. They've got quite a few coming through. 
a few hanging off down here. So like I said, I think I'm going to have a real bumper crop this year. Won't be long before we have some ripe ones. So that's doing really well. And my gem squashes that I mentioned, the ones up this end are doing a little better than down that end. I did have a bit of an attack of snails and slugs, so that's why I've got that blue stuff down to get rid of them. Uh, you can see here this one, the leaves got eaten up by the slugs or the snails, but uh, he's recovered okay, so all's well that ends well. Uh, over here we have, we've got some pak choy, and they're coming up nicely. I started these off indoors. Over here the little gems lettuce aren't exactly uh, sprouting in a crazy fashion. I think I might need to start those indoors. The spring onions though, they are coming up. We can see them coming up over there, so that's good. Need to give them a bit of water. It's been a bit of a warm afternoon. And then these here are my sugar snap peas. They're doing well. They're almost reaching the supports. Won't be long before they are using these as support, but they're doing very well. Lots of weeds I need to keep pulling out, but I'm going to fill in. There's a couple gaps down there that I need to fill in, so that's why I've been growing some indoors. We'll plant those out in a little while. And then over here we have our normal peas, and they're doing great. Uh, we can see here this guy is <laughs> he's connecting up to his next door neighbor but uh, won't be long before they are connecting up to the support itself we can see here snails got so many snails oh, I've got some more babies over here these ones that are these ones over here I actually planted um, the seeds directly in the soil those ones are started indoors but they seem to be coming up okay on this side. Then over here, those are all radishes, those two rows over there. And then on the outside, those are pak choy and they're all doing really well as well. And if I didn't have all this stuff over here, the blue stuff, then uh, these would all be eaten up because the snails love these greens. This is where I'm going to be planting the, the other squashes and courgettes as well in the front here. That's where I'm going to be planting the corn. So it's my first year growing corn, so it'll be quite interesting. I might have too little space there, but hey, we live and learn. So let me get that done. I'm going to go and do some planting. I'll show you that when it's done. And then I think that's it for the video. So all my jobs are done for the day. The uh, courgettes are planted and we have the patty pans planted as well. I decided to put them in. Hopefully we'll have some good weather so they'll really take off. I planted a couple more peas, sugar snap peas into this bunch. So just filling it out a bit. And uh, we can see I've planted quite a few more of the normal peas over here so it's quite a quite a full bed now so I'm done for the day I am absolutely knackered uh, um, got a lot done so I'm happy about that at least the uh, peppers are now all in their final position in their final pots and uh, time for the season to really take off so thanks for watching guys and we'll see you again on the next video bye bye for now